Hi everyone. Today we welcome you to our new tutorial. Today we will be covering how to integrate Spring Security with Spring Boot. As we have learned Spring Security over the time, Spring Security has changed just like other Spring features. Uh, you had to uh, configure all those things in your XML or write Java configuration. Here also you have to write about special configuration you have all if you have all those. In our tutorial we have uh, specified all those things and uh, on top of that we have integrated with our Spring Boot project. Here we will uh, to take the Spring Boot introductory project that we had earlier created. We will take base of that and from there we will move on creating that Spring tutorial for Spring security project. So let's begin what we have today in our tutorial. So here I have created a new module with Spring security. This is a I have copied it from Spring Intro. It's the same thing. We have the controller. It's uh, it can also work as a REST based API. So keeping in mind uh, for our next tutorial where we will be covering how to handle Spring security related feature from Angular project. If you have an Angular 4 front end project, so that if you you can authenticate using Spring Boot and Spring Security services <coughs> from your Angular project, we will be covering that in our next tutorial but before that we will show you how to do it from a normal spring project with spring security spring boot so first of all we have a user model over here so we have three fields role username and password it will be authenticated using username and password and it will have a role uh, today we are not using any database connection it is hard coded username and password will be hard coded uh, but uh, in in future we will be using database so it is uh, this tutorial is <coughs> built keeping in mind that so that you can add database feature with minimal changes so what uh, new things has been added for spring security so let's come down to pom.xml here you will see that we have an extra dependency that has been added This was already there. This one was already there. This feature, this dependency has now been added. Spring status security. And in the test, also Spring security test. This was automatically added by Intel IJ IDEA. Okay, so we are done with POM. I have shown you already the user model. So now let's come down to the configuration how to do it we already have all these JSPs and all those things already from our previous project so let's directly come down to the configuration here you have Spring Boot application you can see my system has slowed down because a lot of tasks are going on in the background okay here nothing extra has been added it's just the same from the previous one so what we have added here is a new package which is config under config there is another package called security so here we have ordered all these things so let's come down to this one web security config so what does this actually handle web security config this class is actually the web security configuration class it will you know, here it is used to configure all the security related features here you can see it has been annotated with at the rate configuration so that boot can spring boot can identify this as a configuration related thing then we have configuration over here security method security so that each of the method that you want to uh, authenticate each of the controller methods uh, you want to authenticate with particular role or such like that you can authenticate based on that and here we have enabled web security we will cover all those things how to secure your application all the controller methods and everything later on so let's come down over here here we have three different classes that are handling different features but let's see what is this user service. This user service will actually handle the uh, backend process. 
So when the request comes, it will come to here. User service will check whether the username or password is matching or not. So what configuration we have added here, you can see the configuration that has been added is all the requests that are coming with this URL pattern will be authenticated. You have to be authenticated to access this URL patterns. Now next you have this. Okay, now see this. You can see this clearly now. You have to mention the authentication entry point. Our authentication entry point is coming from here. Then form login. So this is the URL for uh, form login. By default, it is slash login. I've changed it so that it can be accessed from REST APIs when you will be accessing from Angular. So that this call can be uh, Angular does not misunderstand this calls or something. It's some other APIs that you are calling. <coughs> you have mentioned this with slash rest slash auth slash login. And with this, we are authenticating this and also the failure. How failure will be handled. So we have added this handler also. Success handler, failure handler and the entry point. And here comes your web security. Uh, another configuration so that these files are not authenticated means anything which is residing inside resources static css js all images all these are don't require any authentication so these are the configuration that has been done so now let's move on to this to these three things entry point success handler and failure handler so let's first Take a, take a look at the entry point. What does it have? You can see it is implementing this entry point interface. I'm just using this to check whether it's authorized or unauthorized. So everything that we have configured in that configuration, all those URLs that we have wanted to authenticate, will be checked whether it's authorized or unauthorized and it will be checked using this entry point now let's move on to the success handler so what does the success handler have success handler just checks it and adds it to the request so you can see authentication request that has been taken over here and then we are just clearing all the attributes so that all those password related features all those things necessary uh, thing does not remain in the request anymore so once, once you have authenticated you don't need all those things and what do you have in failure you can see if it is failure it is calling the super super classes here you have the super class it will be better if you go and check uh, have a look at this class what does this class do in detail in the documentation api documentation of this class so it will be handled by the it's just and it will be handled by the super class so we are done with the configuration <coughs> now let's take a look at our user service what does user service actually do? one thing you have to keep in mind the service method or the login feature that you have to authenticate must implement must implement this user detail service this is a inbuilt interface of spring your interface or whatever you are doing with class or interface what you are doing this this class this should be mentioned because in uh, you can have JDBC, JDBC authentication or your personal authentication based service. So here we have our own service. We don't want uh, we don't our Spring's authentication or other authentication. We will be authenticating in a different way in our later project. So it may be LDAP or anything. So user detail service you should implement it so that Spring can handle it because Spring takes only this type of 
though it's user service means by uh, indirectly it's a user detail service you can see here this will take this user detail service this will take only a type of user detail service so what we have done over here in user service we have it is coming this user detail service has this method which we have to implement we have to implement it so here is our implementation when it comes with the username this is the username we have so when the username comes let's check whether the username exists here we have our find by username this is just a mock one actually we'll have connection with database or whatever you ldap or whatever you have <coughs> so here we are checking whether the username is admin then if it is admin we will return a user with its password and role otherwise we are returning null so here we come if the username is admin then it will come over here otherwise it will throw this exception user not found exception and in the front end it will go as unauthenticated so if what happens if the username password matches Username matches. Username matches. What will what will happen? That user will be passed on to over here. The user's username, user's password, and the authority of the user. What type of user? The roles. Any number of roles that you can add to that user that will be added. We'll add this. Take this user and we'll give it to Spring. Because you can see over here, Spring has a different user object so we have our own user object we will pass on those values to spring's user object to let spring handle the password authentic checking or not checking because here we are not checking whether the password is equal or not that is handled by spring internally so what we have done over here regarding the role you can see over here uh, it's have a collection we are checking all the roles in that user then adding this role to the this array authorities array and then it is coming over here so if the if it is uh, here we have only one role admin so this admin will be added you can have any uh, user can have different roles suppose a user can be a manager a user can be a admin uh, as well as a lot of things you can be an HR you can be a or let us think about uh, employee you can have multiple roles one user can have multiple roles and with this we come to the end of the java part now let's take a look at the javascript and J jsp part so what we have done over here in jsp we have this js and jquery it's a simple jsp page where we have our username password page and give our login it's a simple page so this will actually go to the javascript call so here is our javascript so what will happen here it will come this method will be called now what will happen over here you can see uh, the username and password that you have entered will come and this data will be found over here you have to send this send this data to the spring in this way for authentication it is a post request this is our URL that we had mentioned in our Spring Security Config. You don't don't need this these two things. We have commented out. So if it is successful it will be shown as success and if the authentication fails this message will come so let's go there and check so this is the page that you will be getting now let us type the correct Okay, there is a small mistake over here. There, security mistake. I will say 
here the type is type should be given as password right okay we have given it now let's refresh yeah. the now let's refresh it we are not there is no need to redeploy because we have just changed the jsp only okay so you are done with it and yes it's now refreshed okay so we have it should come as success now let's do it it's a wrong password username now let's do it yes it has come so now let's give it something else now let's try you get this message now refresh it it is use the correct one admin admin you see the success message now let's refresh again let's give something else which we have not mentioned you will see the message credentials wrong so with this we come to the end of this tutorial we have covered the spring security with spring boot in our next tutorial we will show you how to use this from angular how will authenticate your project angular project using spring boot and spring security so we have already implemented the spring security feature over here in our next project what we will be doing our whole angular project that we last time covered we were using a rest services using angular so next time what we will be doing before calling the rest services you have to log in so without logging in without authentication you won't be able to access those rest services so let's uh, do it in our next tutorial till then goodbye happy coding if you like my video then subscribe to our channel and also if you have any suggestions or any queries you can comment on our channel we'll get back to you till then bye bye